So Facebook has recently open sourced a new CSS and JavaScript library called Stylex. And it's worth taking a look at it because it offers some very unique benefits. For example, when we use Stylex, the component styling lives in the same file as the JavaScript component that you're applying the style to. This makes your code easy to read and maintainable because everything, that means the styling and the component, is in one place. In addition, a key pain point of CSS is preventing CSS selectors with different specificities from conflicting with one another. In plain CSS, you would usually use some sort of naming convention such as BEM, but the disadvantage of that is it would soon and quickly become inconsistent and hard to maintain. However, StyleX makes it very easy to tell what style is being applied to which element. And on top of all of that, it is a very performant package and the API is very easy to learn and lightweight. So in the next couple of minutes, we're going to cover how we can set up StyleX in a Next.js 13 application with vanilla JS and the basic syntax of StyleX that we can use to style a web application. And hopefully after this video, you'll have a basic understanding of what StyleX is and you can decide whether or not you can use it in your future projects. So let's jump right in. So let's quickly set up a Next.js application that works with Vanilla.js and is configured to run StyleX. To do that, all we're going to do is clone a Git repository that I've prepared. So we're going to press F1 and in the top search bar, we're going to search for clone. And subsequently, we're going to clone the Git repository that I'll be leaving linked down in the description below. So simply paste the URL into the search bar and then press enter. Afterwards, you have to choose a directory where you want your project to be saved. So I'm going to go into my VS Code projects, create a new folder, and this folder I'm simply going to call style x test. And then I'm going to select the repository as the destination. And subsequently, you will see that it is going to open this project within VS Code. Now, most of you who have in the past already created Next applications will have used the command create next app to create a fresh Next application. And what you will notice is that the project which we have open in the editor at the moment is exactly that, but slightly adjusted so that it can work with StyleX. The most important adjustments are the custom compiler configuration in the Babel rc.js file, the adjusted config file that applies the StyleX plugin to the Next.js configuration, and the adjustments within the app directory where the default styled components have been replaced with StyleX styling. The final thing that you need to do in order to run this project is install the modules. You can do that by simply opening up a new terminal and writing npm install and pressing enter. After that, you can run the application locally by writing npm run dev. And the first thing that you will see when you open up the application is this text is styled with StyleX. So now that we have set up everything successfully, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to play around with StyleX and learn some of the basics of how it works. All right, so let's take a look at some of the basic syntax of StyleX. So the library is very lightweight and it only has two main functions that we will be using over and over again. The first one is the create function, which you can also see up here in the editor. And you use it whenever you want to create a new style. And the second function is the props function, which you use whenever you want to apply a style. So you can see that over here at the top, I have created the space style. It has a font size of 100 and the color blue. And then I have applied this style that is called base down here by using um, the props function from StyleX. And I've applied all of this to this div element. And that is precisely why the text down here is being displayed with the font size 100 and the color blue. Now, let's say we want to add some additional styles to the base style, then we can go ahead and simply add any number of different styles. Um, let's say we want to add a margin, margin top and we want to make it 100 pixels. So that's gonna look something like this. And you can see that once I saved, 
the text on the right hand side just jumped down a little bit. Um, something else we can do is we can go ahead and give it a font weight of bold and you can see the text now turns bold. So you can simply go ahead and add any number of styles within these individual style uh, blocks, right? Then uh, the next thing that I want to show you is that you can apply any number of these classes to your um, to your elements. So let's go ahead and make another class. I think that's going to demonstrate it um, best. So if I go ahead and paste a, uh, a, a couple of lines of code, so I've pasted this in here, and um, you can see it's text and it's giving the background color red and the color yellow. So if we now go ahead and apply this style, we can simply go ahead and write comma, and then we're going to write styles dot text. Um, hold on, styles dot text. There we go. And now once I apply this, you can see that the text has turned to yellow with a red background. Now this is quite interesting because in the two blocks um, that you can see over here, we have a color of yellow and a color of blue. So what you can see here is that the last style that is applied to the element is the one that is shown um, within the browser. So if we were to go ahead and turn this around, so first we're applying the text styles and then the base style, you can see that the color of the text changes again because the last style being applied is the base style and the base style tells us that the color should be blue. Uh, instead of yellow as it was a moment ago. Now, we of course, it goes without saying that you can split these styles up. So if we go ahead and take the text style out and create a dedicated paragraph tag, for instance, we can go ahead and apply the style to the paragraph tag by simply specifying it over here. So. I'm going to write text in here and drag the text within the paragraph tag. And this looks absolutely messy, but it will do for now. And you can see that the styles are being applied accordingly. Now, the last thing that I want to show you in this very basic introduction to StyleX is conditional styling. So if we go ahead and remove the text style and we go and also go ahead and remove the paragraph tag again, then what I can do is I can add something along the lines of is active and then add an and sign. And then before the function component, I can go ahead and create the um, variable action. Um, I'm sorry, is active, I mean and I'm going to set it to true, um, which sets the base, uh, which applies the base uh, styling to the um, div tag. But if I go ahead and now change this to false, you can see that the style is taken away. So you can also apply these styles um, conditionally using variables. All right, so we're gonna leave it here for this video. If it helped you out, then make sure to leave a like and subscribe to this channel. And in the next video, I will probably take a bit of a closer look into the details of StyleX.